humans. I am the humble Kiwi, and have resided in this bay in New Zealand since I hatched. I too am a Kiwi because I... No, am... you're not. You're a human, you silly bird brain. Ha, ha, ha. Very funny. I'm not a bird, but I am a Kiwi. See, I reside in New Zealand's Fenua Aotearoa, the futuristic eco-city of 2007. City? I don't see a city. It's right here. Take a look. Wow. I knew on a bay, but where exactly are we on this sustainable island? We are on what the humans call the Bay of Plenty, near the Rumatapa Mountains on the North Island of New Zealand. <gasps> who was that? That was Christopher Lymaster, the chief transportation engineer who designed many of the infrastructures used in our city. And let me formally introduce myself. I am Adam Akubi, mayor of the Great Fenua Aotearoa. Seems like quite a wide city. So, how many people live here? Approximately 300,000 as of the 2070 census, and it's still growing fast. Additionally, the population is very diverse as 14% of it is the indigenous Maori people. Wow, what attracted such a large flock. <laughs> the conservation of nature, low taxes, clean energy, and the low pollution rates are the main attractions. Why are the pollution rates so low? Well, Fenua only recycles or composts its waste. Yes, approximately 95% of the waste is recycled, while the remaining 5% is compost. I know that sheep outnumber people nine to one. And New Zealand is the leading producer of wool for the city. And the manure, that definitely isn't pheasant. Well, the manure is managed through a process called anaerobic digestion, or more commonly referred to as manure to methane, or MTM. There it undergoes a process which turns the poop into leftover sludge and methane gas. So the sludge must be used as fertilizer in farms, and the methane gas must be used in fuel cells as a source of power. Exactly. That also ties into the second reason pollution rates are so low. We only use 100% green energy. Your city can't only run an MTM, so what are the other power sources? There's solar, wind, and mainly geothermal as key renewable options. Geothermal? Doesn't that produce minimal amounts of electricity compared to other alternatives? Usually yes, but since Fenua is located on the Pacific Rim of Fire, geothermal activity is at its peak, allowing for excessive energy to be produced. Why does your city need so much power? Because of the new transportation system, which had to be completely redesigned in 2050. What did the city do to the infrastructure? Well, first of all, we identified the problem. Over the past 50 years, we have experienced an extreme rise of traffic congestion, accidents, and unpredictable journey times. Then we learned the specs, which was how to reduce traffic congestion, improve safety, and improve the vehicle connectivity. Then we brainstormed solutions, which became the GPALs, PTP and an emphasis on public transit, such as our SCVT. The PTP, or personal travel pilot, has an integrated holographic map that displays a view of the city's multimodal transportation system. Cool, but wait, did you say Kiwi Pals? No, it's G Pals. G Pals stands for Global Positioning Altitude System, and is implemented in each pod. Each pod has an onboard computer system which sends and receives data from global satellites. And what was that S? T Z C thing you mentioned? The S C V T, or superconducting vacuum train, is a frictionless train that was implemented along with other public transit, such as eco buses, to reduce the city's carbon footprint and energy consumption. Then we learned this back. Then we learned then we decided to design our these solutions on a computer program to determine which was the most renewable. And what was the result? Well, after several tests and traps, we concluded that it was very successful, and we constructed it in phases throughout the city. I'd imagine there'd be many problems, such as system crashes, power outages, and other weather-related incidents. Yes, however, all, those solution, all the solutions for those problems were solved with the implementation of backup computers and auxiliary power sources. Finally, we shared a solution with the rest of the world. Now, all transit is working together in unison, and Commuters and tourists alike have benefited by reduced traffic congestion, no accidents, and short journey times. Wow, seems like a lot more goes into city planning than I ever thought about. But what disciplines of engineers did you need to design this innovative transportation system and the city itself? Computer, en computer engineers, transportation, and electrical engineers designed GPALs, PTP, and SCBT. Geotechnical engineers designed the geothermal power plants, and civil engineers, like me, designed the road systems and how they flow through the zone plan. What is the zone plan? Well, this is Central City, a mixed use zone. This is a mostly residential zone called the Coast, and this area on the mountain is a Maori Historical Protected Zone. Then, this area is agricultural and high tech industrial, and this area is an aquacultural zone which produces mussels, oysters, and clams. Interesting. Say, what is this model made out of? 
Well, 99% of the model is made of recyclable materials, such as these vertical farms are made of pen tubes. And these apartment buildings are made from circuit boards. And these madly historical homes are made of cardboard boxes, and the trees are made from various spices and lichen. Exactly. Wow, this model's really cool. It gets even better. The model also includes four moving parts, as well as various lights. Four? Yes, they're the SCBT, the Tapari Cord Lighthouse, which stands 350 feet tall, this wind turbine, and the Total Creek Historical Drawbridge. 350 feet tall? That's awfully big for a lighthouse. But on the model, it's 7 inches, so the scale must be 1 inch equals 50 feet. Yes, that's correct. So, how did the yearly theme of solving tomorrow's transit influence the design classes of the model? Well, three of our four moving parts have to do with transportation, and we put extreme emphasis on roads, pods, and ecobuses. Wow, Fenway Aotearoa seems like the best place to live in 2070. It inspires me to create my own city exclusively for Kiwis. I shall call it Fenwa Kiwi, Land of the Kiwis. <laughs> one concept from your model city that you would like to see implemented in your own city? Well, one of the things that we did in our city was that we put an extreme emphasis on public transit, so that would reduce traffic congestion today, so I would like to see that today. One of the public transit is the SCBT here. It's a um, frictionless train which can run at 150 miles an hour, and I'd like to see that put in today's society because it, um, and get people across the city really quickly, and it's very efficient. And I like to see GPALS, the Global Positioning Altitude System, put in our city to prevent many accidents. Perfect. Um, how much energy would your city require to run over? Well, our city would need a lot of energy because it has so many people. But since it's located on the rim of fire, geothermal, activ geothermal activity is at its peak, so we can get a lot more energy from the crust. But to um, answer your question, it can probably it can sustain a population of 300,000 people and have a hundred and it has a hundred percent more capacity, which can be stored away as backup as backup power in case of power failures or sold to other cities. We also have two other alternative energies, such as solar and wind. Alright, so what inspired you or what made you pick the location that you did for your city? The reason we chose New Zealand is because since recently New Zealand has been having problems with transportation, we thought what a better way than to, do, to make a city that already has transportation problems. Also, uh, it's located on the Pacific Rim of Fire, as Nigel said, so geothermal power is like, almost infinite. Yeah, finally, we chose the New Zealand site because the citizens there today and in our future city are highly concerned with nature, and, it promotes, and our city promotes a healthy lifestyle so by growing its own food and farms and disposing of its waste in clean, in clean ways. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.